In this module, we're going to read barometric pressure with the BMP-180 sensor. We're going to be doing things a little different this time, so it'll be pretty interesting. Also, we're actually going to measure temperature, pressure, altitude, and sea level pressure with this device. And in this module, we're going to physically wire up a BMP-180. Then we're going to configure our Pi for I2C communication and install the Adafruit BMP library. Then we're going to write a Python script to display pressure, altitude, and temperature from this device. Some things to note about the BMP-180. It features 3 to 5 volt DC operation. It does pressure sensing from 300 to 1100 HPA. Its operational range is minus 40 to plus 85 degrees Celsius, with a plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius temperature accuracy. And it uses I2C for communication. Now what is I2C? I2C, or I squared C, stands for Inner Integrated Circuit, and it's a software protocol for interacting with hardware. It's generally used in low-speed devices like microcontrollers, EEPROMs, and I.O. interfaces. It only requires two lines, SDA and SDL. It's typically used only for low-speed devices, and it only has a few meters range over the wire. Now, the inner workings and details of this protocol are not within the scope of this module, but if you want to learn more about I2C, you can go to https learn.sparkfun.com slash tutorials slash I2C. As you can see, the wiring is very similar to other wiring we've done in previous modules. Instead of our usual three wires, we now have four. Now I've connected the red to the 3.3 volt at pin 1, black to ground at pin 6, green to SDA at pin 3, and yellow to SCL at pin 5. Your wire colors may be different. As long as the connections are the same, you're fine. The corresponding wires on the chip are as shown. As you can see, we have some handy labels to show us how to wire it. The Adafruit BMP is fairly large and laid out well. Other manufacturers may be a bit smaller, which in turn makes it trickier to see this labeling. But this is how it should be wired up. Now, as you can see here, I have the Raspberry Pi wired up and I have the sensor going directly into the GPIO pins following the diagram that I just showed you. And this is all the physical setup you'll need to do for this particular exercise. Okay, and now I'm connected to my Raspberry Pi through SSH, and I'm going to need to install some dependencies for this project. Here I've typed in sudo apt-get install git build-essential python-dev python-smbus and i2c tools. This is what you'll need to install on your Pi to do this project, and as you can see, I already have these tools installed. So now we're going to go to sudo raspy-config. And on this screen, we want to go down to number 9, which is Advanced Options, and then scroll down to A7, which is I2C, and press Enter. And here it will ask, would you like the ARM I2C interface to be enabled? Select Yes. And now it shows it'll be enabled after a reboot. So press enter. Now here it asks if you'd like to load the I2C kernel module by default. And here we want to select yes. And then click enter. And now we'll select finish. It asks if we'd like to reboot. Select yes. And now we've rebooted and we're back at our prompt. And the next thing we want to type in is sudo nano etsy modules and we will open this file up. Now in modules, we want to put the following two lines. These two modules we want to load into the kernel at boot. So let's save and exit. Next, we're going to edit our boot config. We do that by typing in sudo nano slash boot slash config dot text. Now here, all the way at the bottom, we want to put in the following two lines to enable I2C. And then we'll save and exit. And now let's reboot the Pi. And now that we have that set up, let's do a quick test to make sure that our physical wiring and our setup is correct. Now here I've typed in sudo I2C detect dash Y one. This is because I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2 for this demo. If you're using a Raspberry Pi 1, just change that 1 to a 0. Now, do you see the number 77 there? That means success. 
If you don't see any numbers there, double check your physical wiring and double check the setup steps that we went through earlier. But you should see a number in one of the slots on this grid. And now we're going to clone in the Adafruit Python BMP library. We do that by typing in git clone and then the following URL. Once that's done, we'll go into the Adafruit Python BMP folder. And next, we want to type in sudo python setup.py install. And now that that's installed, let's go into the examples folder. And now we're going to run sudo python simple test.py. And as the name indicates, this is a simple test of the device. And as you can see, we're getting some values here. We've got a temperature, we've got pressure, altitude, and sea level pressure. Now let's take a quick look at that Python file. Now if we look here, we're importing the Adafruit BMP BMP085 library. And we have our sensor set as the BMP085 as well. And as you can see here, we're simply printing out some values here. And we're printing out a formatted read of sensor.read temperature, sensor.read pressure, sensor.read altitude, and sensor.read sea level pressure. Now in other modules, we've sent this up to the internet. We've made some CSV files, things like that. And it's very easy to do. All you'll have to do is put these sensor dot and then method files into a variable. So if you want a temperature variable, you can just do it like this. And the temperature will go into that variable. This is a very easy to use Python script because everything's laid out very clearly. So I hope we've shown how easy it is to set up this particular sensor. In this module, we physically wired up the BMP-180, we configured the Pi for I2C, we installed the Adafruit BMP library, and then we pulled down a Python script to display pressure, altitude, and temperature. Now in this module, we learned how to interact with the BMP-180. This is a great addition to weather systems and could be used for a variety of projects for tracking, analyzing, and even predicting weather. It's super cheap and easy to work with. I look forward to hearing about some of your experiments that you do with it. And now, on to the next module.